Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. And whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another one. It's today. It's Sunday. And I don't have a mimosa today for mimosas and makeup, but I do have some Yellowtail Sangria Blanco. Let me show you the bottle because I got it right here because this is standard. But this is it in case you are interested. It's in the words of my nephew, River. So tasty. Now, this is probably not fitting into my lower carb lifestyle, but it's 10%. I, I, you know, typically like something a little stronger, but I was in the mood for this. So that's what I'm having today. Mom, yes. Charging the <clears throat> okay, so the solution is that if you go into the front pocket, wait, do you see this haircut? I'll turn my head. If you go into the front pocket of my bag, there's a charger in there. No, but it, I, I, I twisted it and then it. I'm it very didn't. appalled that I ordered chargers from Amazon and they're not working. That's what happens when you order blue bank chargers. But just go in the front pocket of my bag and get the gray charger. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to close the door. Anyway, for mimosas and makeup, I am. Well, first of all, hold on. Back to why I have this cup. I did not want to mess up velvet cinnabar no so i needed a straw today okay oh, and check this out y'all this is the dior Overcurl mascara in the shade brick look at that red paradise glow i can't all right if you want to listen to me talk about everything i tried in the month of august keep on watching this video and let me know what you think and if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you want to hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community because I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So this is another video that I, I really enjoy filming because literally what I do is after I wear something, I put it in a basket. And if I go back and wear it again, I just try to keep track of it. I try to put it back in the basket and then it just builds up. And then at the end of the month, I have everything uh, set aside that I tried. It is a great way for me to come back, think about it again, do a quick speed review and have more than a first impression of a product. And with all these sales happening, holidays coming, VIBs coming, things like that. I, I like to be able to give more than a first impression. And um, some of these things are new, some are old. So it's a great mix here. I always save the eyeshadows for last because that's usually what I have the most of. Um, let me see if I can show y'all my bed. Hold on so y'all can see. See, everything's right there all lined up and don't mind anything else that you see. Okay, my voice is still in the process of coming back. I'm, I'm guessing it'll be back. I don't know when it's coming back, but hopefully it'll be back by Tuesday uh, because you know we're off for Labor Day. So that is my plan. Let's start with complexion products, shall we? No, let's not. Let's start with fragrance. I have two. So I have the Eilish by Billie Eilish. I randomly picked this up during a trip to Alta, yes and if you like vanilla you will love this it is just it's a classic vanilla scent uh it's got a little bit of like that spice but it's not like um the closest thing i'm thinking of is like warm vanilla sugar from bath and body works i remember like i had that scent at one point and i was like it's vanilla but it's too much of something else this isn't like that now if you don't want to smell like baked goods you might not be into to that oh, i just remembered i'm supposed to be making brownies so i might have to pause this but I'm, i gotta get a chunk of this done i would recommend this if you like vanilla i think that this is a great uh scent to pair with lots of other things that i have like my tom ford tobacco vanille my tom ford bitter peach my uh what is it called house of siage wonder woman this goes with just so much. So I'm happy to have this one. And then I also purchased the mini size of the Kali 
love fest um scent this is burning cherry if you are interested or like the tom ford lost cherry I'll get a sure <clears throat> oh i'm about to come out and do the brownies in 10 minutes okay 10 minutes i'm about to start the brownies no, I'm not, they didn't have no late night brownies. They're going to bed. You know, Tyrone's boys are here on the weekend too. So it's, he has three boys. I have two. Y'all know that. But then um, two come and sleep over on the weekend. So it's four boys here. They're going to want them brownies. Like, no, I got to do it. I really, really like this. And I would definitely consider getting the full size of this during the Sephora VIB sale. Again, if you like cherry scents, if you have smelled the Tom Ford Lost Cherry and don't want to pay that price because... I'm not paying that price anymore because it doesn't last very long on me. I, I would recommend this. As far as the lasting power, I don't know. Cause by the time I get home, I feel like I smell like a puppy. I don't know, I'm, I'm running around, I'm outside. I'm, I'm not the one to ask um, about it, but it just smells really good. So I mean, a, a puppy is the closest thing I can tell you because that that is I, I, I that's how I smell now let's go into the complexion products and I'm gonna start with what I've been using the most so for my face I have been using this Chanel uh, complexion touch water fresh complexion touch you can see that it's starting to uh, go up now I said when I purchased this that once I started using it I think it's gonna go fast I usually use about two pumps. I put it on my face with my fingers and then I use my BK Beauty 101 to kind of blend it out. It gives a very, very light amount of coverage. I think it's great for just kind of evening out your tone. And if you have any redness, it does cover that up. So I really like that. I have been going super light with foundations. So this is the one that I, have really been going to lately. I do have it in two shades, but I have been so in love with the Dior concealer, which I'm gonna talk about, that I haven't been using the other shade that I have, wherever that is. So this is B40, I have B30. Maybe this week I will try B30 with the B40 and see if I like that better than the look I, I have right now. Is it worth the price tag? I mean, I think it's because it's Chanel, I would be curious and uh, be interested in watching a video that compared this to the Rose Ink uh, product that seems to be very similar. I would be interested in that. If you have tried them both, let me know. If you like the Rose Ink, let me know because this is pricey and if it goes fast, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to uh, keep up with that, but I really, really like it. It gives you a, a really natural finish. It's dewy, but it's not like overly dewy. It's definitely not matte. And it does uh, contain, you know, a lot of water in it. So I, I really like this. It feels like you don't have anything on your face. This month, I also went back and used my Auric Glow Lust. And this is in the shade Sunstone. Now, when I used it this month, I used it with nothing on top. Prior to that, I want to say I was using that and foundation. Now that is too much for me. That is now officially too much for me. This product is heavy. It's heavier than the Chanel. And then putting something on top of that, I, that was just very unnecessary. For me, this shade, like when I used the shade Pyrite, I was mixing it with foundation because that shade is more of a highlighter shade and to me, it's a bit light to use on its own. So I think I was mixing it. The Sunstone is my skin tone. So when I used Sunstone, I used it as a foundation. It is very, very dewy. If you don't like it, you don't want to glow, this is not gonna be the product. I do hear some people saying that this is a bit thick for them, and it is. It is a bit thick, so I just cannot use a lot. That's how I adjust. I can't use a lot, but I really like the radiance.
that the glow lust has so i was glad to bring this back out because sometimes we get a hold of new things that we really love and we forget about what we have so i was happy to bring this back out i still have a very significant amount in this bottle and pyrite as well so i want to continue using that now this month i also tried the hourglass ambient soft glow foundation and i have this one in the shade 11. i think the coverage with this is really good to me this is full coverage and i think when i tried this out i did two pumps and that was too much no one at best for me i, I like the coverage the finish is great anything the hourglass that that says ambient is usually something that i know i'm gonna like because i like that finish it's like very natural looking but it gives you kind of that glow uh, from within but you can see i just put a small little layer just playing around over my star tattoo and i mean i didn't even put a whole pump on my hand and it's covering it so you see that you know it's radiant it's dewy and when it dries down i, I think it still gives that appearance on your skin so if you like a medium to full closer to full I feel like this is full for me. So this is gonna take me a nice amount of time to work through. I can't remember how much this is, but I would say this will last you a long time, unlike the Chanel, which I feel like I'm gonna run through that. So that was that. I would recommend this if you are looking for this type of finish and you're looking for something that's full coverage, but I cannot use a lot of it. Concealer, I think I mentioned already, this has been my number one for the for all of August. And I would consider getting maybe a shade or two lighter, but because I have not been wearing foundation as much, and this would probably be my all over shade for foundation, at least for uh, now at this time of year, this works really well for me because it's my same skin tone. So it doesn't look like I have a concealer on because usually, you know, we go for a concealer that is lighter than our foundation to give you kind of that highlighting effect. But when I don't want to look like I have anything on, I don't need the highlighting effect, you know? So when I get up and I'm going somewhere like today, I went to my nephew's football game, didn't wear any foundation. I really just put the Dior concealer on my Chantecaille powder. I even put a little bit of blush on and it, it was this look pretty much. And I, I thought it looked really natural. I think if I used my Pat McGrath or my LYS or any of the other concealers I have, I don't think it would have looked seamless. So I really like this. And you know, even though the shade, when I bought it, I realized ah, I could have went lighter. This has turned out to be one of my best purchases this year. So I am really happy with it. I love the way it makes my under eye look. The powders that I use, which is either the Pat McGrath or the Chantecaille or the Hourglass Ambient, they all work well with this. I highly recommend this one. Probably talked about this last month, the Hygien Primer Serum by Natasha Denona. Absolutely love this. I mean, I'm using this on a daily basis. I mix it with my sunscreen and just, it is so radiant and it just leaves your skin so dewy. Yes, I mean, and ready for, you know, whatever you're gonna put on top. I still really, really like this. So this is going like two months strong. And I'm feeling a little bougie because talking about a powder and bronzer, I have two products from Chantecaille. This, unfortunately, medium deep powder I really hope that they expand because they do seem to have people with rich skin tones, um, you know, wearing their things in promos. I, I feel like I've seen that. So this is not gonna work for everyone. I might not have seen that. I might've made that up. Let me go back and check because, okay, that whole nother video, but I'm, I'm gonna go back and check. This powder is great. I, I love that it's pressed and I think it gives just a beautiful blurring effect on my under eye, but you can use it all over your face. Prior to that, I was using the Pat McGrath powder, great for the under eye. I don't think I want that powder all over my face. 
it is nice but it's really really powdery where this is just a really smooth pressed situation and i i just love the look the thing is is that sometimes i don't put powder all over my face since i haven't been really wearing foundation like that I, i've only been putting the powder under here and i just feel like it is seamless it, along with that concealer the dior it is a seamless look like that's what i'm wearing right now i don't do i have foundational i have um the chanel skin touch so it all just seems to mesh really well and i have again used it all over my face as well as just under the under eye and i think it's great but i would wait for a sale they also have some Chantecaille stuff on Macari that I've been eyeing because this is not a brand that I can really afford to pay a regular price for on a regular basis. It's just not practical, but I really do like this. I feel more comfortable taking this one with me somewhere versus the Pat McGrath one because the Pat McGrath one is really fragile. I tried the bronzer in Goa. This is the deeper bronzer. I like this, but I had to get used to it. I had to go really light because it's deep for me. And the redness that's in this bronzer honestly makes it a pretty decent blush. I did use it today. You probably can't see it because I went super light with it. I can see it like up in here. But when I use this one, I think I have to be really careful with what kind of blush I'm putting with it because I don't think it goes with every blush that I would choose to use i'm wearing paradise glow and i think it it went well like they complemented each other originally when i tried this i think i had on like a petal pink type blush and i really didn't like it at all i feel like it made this area kind of grayish now the other shade they have is called serena and that one is more like the warm tone kind of no actually not even warm tone neutral bronzers that i tend to go for like my gucci 03 that type of bronzer. That one to me, I could grab and put it on and it'll go with anything. This one was a little bit different for me, but um, I do like it even though it's a bit deep. Again, a sale. The formula of this bronzer is great. This one and the Chanel Sun Kiss Powder are the most unique textures that I have when it comes to bronzer. And this is like, I don't know if this is like baked gelée or whatever they call it, but you can actually just press this in it's like spongy it's really neat and i love that and i think because of that texture and even the chanel one it's like you're not gonna waste it it's not gonna be powdery all over the place like that pat mcgrath powder i waste so much of that powder that under eye powder even though it's great i'm wasting life i've hit pan on it and i'm like how but i waste so much like you just dip the brush in there and it's everywhere and you gotta tap it off it's smoke in the air it's a lot with this one i feel like it picks up what i need to and i'd rather just go in and get more than wasting you know the the product because none of them are cheap none of them so now we're gonna go into highlighters and blush and since we were talking about Chantecai, and i may have mentioned this one last month but i've just been wearing it a lot so it's not that i'm trying to just share all new things i've tried i'm sharing things that i may have tried previously and i'm still loving and I'm, i continue to try it and continue to use it and this is from the sunbeam collection this is the shade ray and this is a peachy i, I want to say they may have said it was a blush for some people and it might be not necessarily for me but it's a peachy champagne highlight it's beautiful i'm starting to wear down some of the embossing now I did not pay like the $82 or however much this was. And even with the 25% off, it was pricey. Can we find a shade like this somewhere else? Probably so. I'm thinking of the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Highlighter, which is another one of my favorites, which is probably why I like this one so much. But it's, it's really nice. It's smooth. It just gives you a natural little highlight. It's not glittery. I think, I, I think it's awesome to be honest. I'm not trying to be that bougie girl, but I think it's really nice. Now you all know I did purchase Muerte and I did get the Illumination highlighter. They were actually giving this away free if, if you bought a certain amount of stuff. I didn't know that, but I, I purchased it because I wanted it to go with the palette. I love the beautiful skull embossing on this and I did purchase it. It was on sale uh, like as a last chance item, but this has a really beautiful iridescence to it. 
and I think it's a beautiful highlight. It's a one of those pink to gold flips, and those are one of my favorite flips. I have that a few times over in eyeshadow shades. Now, I wouldn't wear this one every day, but I really liked it. Don't necessarily like it with the Melt palette, to, I mean the Muerte, to be honest with you, but it is a nice highlight, and it looks like it would be great on the eyes for the lid or even for the inner corner. And then I have a couple of blushes. So let's first talk about these RMS blushes. These may be one of my favorite purchases of the year. I've seen so many content creators rave about them and then they were out of stock and I was like, when they came back, I'm like, I definitely wanna try these. And right now at Skin Store, is it Skin Store? They're having 25% off of most brands. RMS is one of them. And I'm thinking about getting another one, the Mai Tai shade, which is like the peachy, orangey shade. Otherwise I was gonna wait for VIB, but that's be 20%. So, right? VIB is 20%, not 25. So I'm thinking about getting another shade and maybe even trying a few other products from RMS Beauty because these are, to me high-end blushes and they definitely compare to luxury blushes they are thirty dollars and then i believe that they are refillable so you can get a refill for 24. so i have um i have the shade sangria and then i have the shade maiden's blush they're both just so gorgeous now again if you don't want a blush that has sheen to it these are not going to be for you but I love them. Like, look at that. And they just look so good on the skin. So I really want another one or two. Now, I just talked about this. I also replaced my Chanel blush, The Chains. Yes, this is one of my favorites. I was saying in a previous video that the RMS Beauty blushes are just as good. So this is more of, I mean, it's a blush I'm using, but I love the chains on this. It's a collector piece that I misplaced and I, I repurchased it. And I'm sorry about my terrible nails. But you see, to me, the quality is really very similar. Very similar, smooth texture. RMS Beauty obviously is a lot cheaper. So if you are interested, I think they, they may have a shade that's close to this one. Cause they have this shade called Hanky Panky that's a bit darker. I'm not sure how it compares to the chains. Oops. But, I love my Chanel blush, I do not regret it. Now the last two blushes that I tried are by Mama Pat. So the blush duos did go on sale. So I got the two shades that I was originally looking at. Uh, so we have here Cosmic Coral, and then we have Paradise Glow. Let me say this, cause I'm wearing Paradise Glow right now and it's a little washed out, but you can see it. I think Paradise Glow is gonna be, is, I think it is my favorite Pat McGrath blush period. So Desert Orchid, I was going real strong with that, like, and mixing it with Nude Venus. I, I like, Paradise Venus is this shade here, but this other shade that's mixed with it, it's just the perfect combination. I mean, look at that, it is beautiful. And I did not put on highlighter. So that's what I'm left with. And I think it looks amazing. What? Do you want brownies? Because I'm going to make brownies right now, actually. Uh, no. I cookies. Okay, you can have cookies. I'm going to get ready to make brownies. These were $31. So if they're still $31 during VIB, you would get 20% off, right? I don't know if they're still going to be on sale. But this makes me want to try the Night Bloom shade, and I think that's out of stock. But these two were my original two, and then I was like, I wanted Night Bloom, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to wear it but I think I would enjoy it. I'm, I'm loving this finish. I think it looks really good. But the tone of Paradise Glow, like you could let this be the standout. Like I don't like, you know, I just have like a one and done shade on right now. And I think this looks really good. And I love Cosmic Coral. Let me swatch that one. Cosmic Coral is very beautiful. And she didn't really have like a coral blush in her original line. I feel like they were just more pink than anything. And you can kind of pick up more of the brown peachy shade if you want to but these are two great shades so you know I didn't want to pay full price for them and I didn't I think you know the $31 is about 25% off so I, I'm I'm really happy with these now I do also have a Venetian sunrise my friend Miri sent that one to me and I think I talked about that one last month 
that was the lightest one and it has more of a lilac type hue and i'm not sure if that would look good on everyone but i think these two will so but i like that shade as well all right so we are done with blush let me talk about two nail polishes real fast i'm gonna put these brownies in and then we'll do lipstick and eyeshadow the two nail polishes that i tried this month were from chanel so when i got the two lipsticks that i purchased from the fall collection i purchased these two uh, nail polishes and the first one is called emotion and this is number nine four five and i also purchased inspiration which is 955 and you know what i don't think chanel nail polish is better than any other nail polish you know what i mean I think it was just I was I wanted to purchase a couple things from the collection and those are the things that I decided to purchase. By the way, I just love the way that collection was laid out with all of those kind of nude pinks and browns, rosewoods, all those shades with the lipsticks and the polishes. I think it was great and I think that the eyeshadow quad that they had go with it was perfect. I just I didn't get that because it just reminded me a bit of like Pat McGrath, Divine Rose, things that I already have. And they're expensive, but I really, really did like these. I need to do my nails. I've been trying, but it is a struggle. All right, that's it for polish. I am going to go get these brownies going and then come back. We got lipsticks and eyeshadow palettes. Those are the two fun parts. So I will be right back. All right, one kid has been bathed. Brownies are in the oven. And we are gonna be talking about lipsticks or lip products. So let's start with, did we leave off with Chanel for blush? Then let's start with Chanel for lipsticks. And I have three that I used this month. Uh, in addition to, oh, four actually, cause this is Adrian. Adrian's one of my favorites. We'll start with that one. This is just one of my favorite nude shades. This is uh, the Rouge Allure formula. So it's just a beautiful kind of pinky nude beige shade. Thank you, August. Great job. I also have this one called Terre de Trois from the Comet collection. Brought that one out this month as well. I love this lipstick formula. I don't know what it is. It just feels like really, oh wait, I don't have that on right now. <laughs> it just feels really, um, I don't know, soothing to me. The two new ones that I have from the fall collection uh, that I also purchased the nail polish from are shade 196, a Demi Mott. I never checked that pronunciation. So that's this one right here. And you can see I go for the same types of shades. These are the ones that really attract me. Pinky nudes, brown nudes. So yeah, I love that one. And then I also have Alter Ego, which is shade 209. I was hoping that these were gonna be at Selfridges because these are like 45 and that's expensive. That's why I only got two. But on Selfridges, the Chanel lipsticks are like 36. So that's still expensive though. This is Alter Ego. So, you know, these are very uh, similar. There are some subtle differences, but they're different enough for me to love. So I have been wearing uh, the two new shades a lot. And then Adrian is like a staple shade. I wear it all the time. I feel like with lipsticks, I'm more of a bougie person when it comes to lipsticks. Eyeshadows, I can do anything indie, high-end luxury, but lipsticks, I feel like I've just become so bougie. So with the Chantecaille highlighter, I purchased the Balm, and this is the shade Sunflower, and there it is. Different formula altogether, but same, same family, you know? This is, again, a Balm. So the pigment on this is, is pretty sheer, but I like it because my lips have uh, become kind of pale, so I like to have something on to like, I don't know, just give them a little bit of a, a flush of something. And that's what I've been going for. Now on the opposite spectrum of that, we have some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks that I tried out this month. Uh, I've tried them out before, but I brought them out this month. We have Wonder Wheel, which is from the Luxuriously Lucent lipsticks. And this is just a beautiful bright pink here, gorgeous. These you do have to reapply a lot. I'm not sure, although I love the shades, 
if the price, you know, because they're like 36. So they are expensive. I think the velvets and these, uh, what are these called? Insanely pigmented. Those are the ones I would really go for from Lisa Eldridge. And you can always extend the longevity of the lipstick by using a liner, but sometimes I don't want to do that. And lately I haven't been doing liners like that. I did do the Cinnabar liner today. I did wear New Wave, had that on with a real subtle eye look and a inner corner. Was it an inner corner that matched this? Something like that, yeah. So this is that insanely pigmented formula. I really liked it. I really liked it. And um, even though nudes are my favorites, I liked having the lipstick be kind of the focal point of the makeup look. I also have here Strawberry Shock, which is just really, really beautiful as well. I hope she comes out with more of these because these are just great and they're really unique. I also purchased four of the Dior Forever Transfer Proof lipsticks and they did not disappoint. They are indeed transfer proof and I was really surprised. I have 518. This one is Forever Confident. Put it on this side. So there it is. 505, which is Forever Sensual. And they do have these at Sephora. A lot of the shades are out right now and hopefully they'll be in stock for VIB um, because they're $42. But with the 20% off, I think it'd be worth it. Someone asked me, did these last through a meal? Yes, it did last me through a meal. Uh, they last a long time. This one is 210 Forever Natural. Putting that up top here. So you can see that's a very, very light shade. And lastly, I have 416, which is Forever Wild. That's the deepest shade. None of them transfer. This is like an ochre. It's beautiful. So those are the shades I have in, in the uh, Dior Forever. Would I like more shades? Of course I would. Do I need more shades? No, I do not. And lastly for lips, and then we'll get onto the eyes. I did try Rare Beauty, the Kind Words Lipstick and Lip Liner. And I have the shade Wise. So there's the lip liner. And overall, I think Rare Beauty seems to be a pretty solid brand. Haven't tried everything from them, but yeah. There's the shade and you know, again, it's similar like to Forever Sensual, more of like a cool tone, pinky brown. I, I love those types of shades. I, I mean, I think the Rare Beauty is the quality wise is just as great as like the Dior. The Dior has a leg up on everyone because of the transfer proof situation. Hey, what's up? I'm in the shower. You're getting a shower? No. Yeah, you are. You can go ahead now, yeah. No, yes, yes. Someone you need, yeah, and you need to go wipe your mouth and everything, okay? And get yourself together. I think it's a water. Okay, and then, okay. All right, changing my battery. And we're gonna wrap this up with the eyes. We are ready for the eyeshadow palettes, my favorite part. So I actually have a nice little pile here, but I'm, I'm not gonna make this too long. First up, we have the Tom Ford Metallic Denim. I'm trying to think about when I put this on or what I put it on with. I can't remember, but I know <laughs> I pulled it out because it was in my pile. I really like this quad. I'll say this, it's uh, more unique than what he's coming out with. I don't, I don't know what Thomas is doing, but I love this. This is a blue that I enjoy. It's not super bright. These shades are really shimmery and sparkly. Actually, right now I am just wearing these two shades, this one on the lid, this one in the inner corner. So these top two. And you know, you can use, you, you don't have to feel like you have to wear all of the shades, you know? And, and I have felt like that for a long time. These two are great with the red mascara. I, I think it's a whole, a whole little situation. And then I could always use the black or the blue as a liner, or if I do want to deepen it up, use the, that on the outer corner if I wanted it to be, you know, more smoky. If I did that, I wasn't gonna wear this lipstick, so that's why I kept it light. But I still do like this quad by Tom Ford. I think it's really nice. This is the wet dry formula. I did not use them wet. I just was putting something on for the video and I, I chose this, but I did wear it last week. I just can't remember what look I did with it. So I like, I have two palettes from Huda Beauty and they're both from the Obsessions collection. So this is, well, you know, the nine pants. So the first one is the Love Fest palette. And I really enjoy wearing this. 
In my video, I said that it reminded me a bit of Utopian Dream with less pink and more orange, which is great because I love orange. I think that this palette had great performance. Some people say that her mini palettes are not as good. I don't agree with this this one. This this is great. I don't agree with that for the next one. This purple reminds me of the purple in Utopian Dream. Not as sparkly, but really good. I think the shimmers in here are nice. I think the mattes perform well. Like this is just a really nice palette. Did I need this palette? No. Do I have some similar shades from Huda Beauty? I do. There's a similar purple in the Rose Quartz palette, but the Rose Quartz palette, even though I think it's a great palette, it's a bit cool for me. This is just more warm and vibrant, and I will probably go for this before I go for the Rose Quartz, even though I think Rose Quartz is beautiful. Very curious as to what she's going to do for her palette this year. It would be really cool to see some type of wild palette like a big version. I'm not sure what I would want that to look like. So I'll just go with whatever she's going to do because I, I really don't have any um, particulars here on that. But I also did play with the Jaguar palette. I actually did a little quick get ready with me using this one. And again, I usually don't go for cool tones. I really, I know I can pull them off, but they're just not my favorite. I think the glowing goddess bronzy looks are more me. But because I feel like I have more of a neutral tone, I can do the cool ones, but it just has to be something I really, really like. So I really, really like this. That's the bottom line for here. You've got a couple little grungy shades. You got a beautiful purple sparkle. And I love the mattes in here as well. So there's the purple there. I love this kind of grungy shade. I mean, this one was really good. This is the only one I had out of the four. But honestly, oh my God, I watched Mel Thompson because I think Huda had a sale and Mel almost had me buying all of these palettes. Um, I'm still so sad that she is not with us because she, her looks are timeless and I can only imagine what she would be doing with some of the palettes that you know, have come out this year. Mm. But I, I really like this one out of all four of the wild palettes. This was gonna be the most unique to, to my collection. But yeah, these shades are, are nice. They're really nice. If you, if you have this and you haven't pulled it, like look, if you haven't pulled this out in a while, give it a go. I think you will fall in love with it again. And when I used it recently, you know, I just kind of did a look where I, I used these uh, two mattes. Didn't really dip into the black, but you can really do like some beautiful evening and I would say glam looks you know incorporating that black and just you know making it really smoky I mean even with the brown it, it, this is a really nice one I do have two Dior quints in my pile so let's see which ones these are mm, coral paisley so coral paisley is really nice and it's this orange shade right here that does it for me it's like this melony orange. I can't remember how I used it this time, but the first time I used it, I used the orange to actually smoke out the eye. So pretty, y'all. Uh, we got to make some room for some of these. On the eye, this looks even better. I, I don't know how to explain it, but you know, this is gonna give you soft looks. I mean, I'm not gonna sit up here and be like, oh my God, this is so great. But the looks to me are just like, fail proof with this one and I like orange I really like orange eyeshadow so you know when I swatch these out it, it doesn't look like anything great but when I put this orange shade on I mean I would do it even as a one and done I, I think it's great and you know with the Dior quints you know you don't don't focus on using them all just pick like three three at the top three at the bottom or you know go on like the three down the sides like that this shade right here is pretty much an inner corner shade at best for me. I, I do uh, like the looks with this palette. Ah, I have Mirror Mirror. I didn't film this one, uh, a video with this, but uh, Mirror Mirror is another one. I could just do a quick, easy look. And I think that's why I like this one. Again, this has a beautiful orange shade, different formula in this palette, but a nice orange nonetheless is different than 
the one from um, Coral Paisley. This shade right here, it's kind of a antique type green. Put it there. There it is. And the other ones are just, you know, your regular shades. But I think these two shades are the ones that stood out for me. And I, I do think I wore this to work one day. I can't remember, but it's good. What I enjoyed about this one is that it wasn't $60 or however much they cost. This one was $44 for some reason. And the eyeshadow formula seemed the same. So not sure. And I think it's the same amount of product. Not sure why the price was different, but I can't wait to pair this with the mascara because this is all from the same collection. I passed on the red one, even though I really liked it because I have that red tartan one, the velvet one, and um, yeah, I didn't need that. Now we have a one and done shade here. This is the Smoke Reflect from Auric, and this is in the shade Entice. Now the way these work is you've got your topper here that has a little mirror in here. The toppers aren't great. I ain't, this might have hard pants, so we're gonna have to do something with that. But the, the toppers aren't the best. It's okay. But the cream shade, and you get a lot of product in here. This uh, kind of taupey green. I don't know if it's taupey. It's like an army green. It's really great. I keep the little top on there. And uh, this shade has stayed very nicely. But... So I did this as a one and done. It blends out. I love it. I have two of these. I have Disrupt and Entice. Disrupt is a red. Um, this was from Holiday 2021. So I really like that. The topper, uh, it's not my favorite, but I, I do love the cream shade. So I did a one and done with that. Patrick Ta Major Dimension continues to be a staple. I have been using this a lot of times for the mattes. And then I'll take like a Terra Moon shade and pop that on and it just gives something special. I think that the Major Dimension 2, the shimmers were better than the shimmers in this one. These shimmers are, you know, kind of ashy. But these mattes here, I really love them. And a couple of the shimmers I really do really like. But I think that he stepped it up in the second palette. I do like the creams as a eyeshadow base. I think they work really well for that. And I put them on my lid and you can just take a brush and blend it up. You almost have a transition there. And you can just take a, another matte to kind of enhance that and a shimmer and you're done. So I really like this. This is like a go-to palette, like I said, to pair with my indie singles. So I'm glad I have that. Another palette I went to this month was the Natasha Denona glam face palette in light i did not use the blush but i do like the blush in here and i know i think morgan turner said hers dried out but mine is it's it's staying strong so yeah well, you can even see that yeah it's staying strong but this one again another foolproof look that you can create with this palette and with the light palette you can kind of use the shades as they are labeled. Oh, that's what I did. Obviously you can use it any way you want, but that's what I did with this one. The deep, the dark palette's a little bit different, I believe. So this is another great one. I had to get ready for work and be quick. And this helped me out. Was really excited to try Oma Beauty for the first time. And I have the Black Magic palette. This palette really surprised me. I'd only seen two reviews but the reviews that I saw really blew me away. Uh, this is just such a unique and beautiful color story. It's unique and wearable. So you're not gonna look at this and be like, ah, these don't go with anything. I just think this palette was beautifully done. And like the names of the shades, you know, you got Pac, X, Garvey, Nelson, Lewis, Dubois, that you have you know a lot of history here with this palette and the shimmers are just outstanding let me just uh swatch them here's uh nkrumah and i'll show them up close we got king look at that pock i mean even from right here you got x pink to gold flip and selassie so gray i mean look at those 
And then I, the mats that they chose for the bottom row, I just think were perfect. So, and then you have the black there. If you wanted to go a certain way, you could even just take uh, the black and maybe even put one of these shimmers on top. So I really like this palette and it was a pleasant surprise. I was really happy to try this palette and really like it. And then we have my BYOP palette, my BYOP not BYOP palette. And you know, this is my monthly collab that I do with Kelly from Keep Beauty Real. I really love this palette. I love the shades that I picked and I am gonna keep this palette together for a while. Um, I, I think this palette was super easy to use and I'm glad that I created it. It incorporates a lot of my favorite shades. Like this brown transition shade is just perfect. There are a couple shades like this in the Natasha Denona bronze palette, which I used the other day. That'll be in my September roundup because I just used it. But these types of shades are just my go-to transition shades, that peanut butter brown type shade. And then what is this? Mom Ride by Sydney Grace. Great deepening shade. Oh, Sydney Grace with their mattes. Bravo is like the perfect army green. And then one of the new shades that... Um, I tried was the shade Lit. This one is from Unearthly Cosmetics. And this is a part of the Heat Bundle. And I chose this because I just felt like it was just such an easy go-to shade that, you know, you could pair with one of those mattes. And it's not doing too much, you know? It has a little sparkle to it, but it's also kind of smooth. And then for a go-to palette, you know, I am going to want something special. And that's where... Uh, I think this is Hyperion. Yeah, Hyperion from Terra Moons. That's where this shade came in. This is one of the ones that I would take and pair with the Patrick Ta palette because it's just, it just goes beautifully with it. And there it is. Cause a brown, like you just can't fail with a brown and like an indie type shadow. This would even go great with like a mauve transition shade as well. Another favorite of mine, Vermilion from Cleona that this is like that pink to gold flip i'm always talking about it's you know more extreme but it is gorgeous and the other one i want to highlight well two more i'm not gonna swatch them all but i do have the video up tiara from sydney grace probably one of the best shades in my singles collection like come on like what is happening and then Commission is another one, beautiful, antique type shade. I was gonna say it's kind of similar. I was thinking maybe to that green that was in the Dior palette, but maybe not, I'm not sure. There's Commission, look at that. Sydney Grace has got some palettes, y'all. Those were the standouts. I did order the Tropicolor palette. I, I just couldn't help it, because I just know the quality is gonna be great. But with that, I ordered the Mountain Trail Bundle. I've had my eye on that for a while. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna get it. Next, I have the Chow Chow Palette from Viseart. Did a really cute look where I just took a brown from here and a gold and put that all over the lid. And then I took this shade and put it in the inner corner. So yeah, I used like these two shades on the lid, transition lid and then put that in the inner corner, swept this one underneath. It was great. Uh, I haven't used this to its fullest potential, but I am really feeling the Viseart formula as well as the mattes especially, because you know they are just a perfect setup for the indie singles. So I, I was happy to try this one out. From Adept Cosmetics, I have the Omunet palette, and this one was gifted to me. This was in the, the light version. I... I have not been disappointed with anything from Adept Cosmetics at all. So this, this palette did not disappoint. Shades were great. I'm thinking I like the Heather Austin palette better than this one, but I love it. I am extremely excited for the Minka palette that's coming out this fall with all of those kind of bronzy, uh, metallics, like kind of like industrial shades. Really excited uh, to see that palette in full. Huh? You can't get a brownie. All right, two more palettes, and then we talk about Mama Pat. So we've got, oh, he did have cookies. He's in there wilding out. 
Hey, no. he's Tyrone said no because I forgot. Did you have cookies? No. Are you lying to me? That's cheating. You're cheating? Yes. Why? You need to wipe it. But I told you we were making brownies and you said, I don't want brownies. I want brownies. You said, you said, I don't want brownies. I want my cookies. I want my, I want my brownies. I can't because you wanted that instant gratification. And I understand it because we all do. But I did t inform you. Didn't I tell you I was making brownies? No. I didn't tell you? I didn't tell you we were making brownies? Where's that noise? It was an ice maker. Did I tell you? Okay, close the door. Cause you 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 don't want to be honest. You don't want to be honest. Didn't I tell you I was making brownies? No. Yes. Yes. I know I did. I'll see you upstairs in a minute. Close the door and I'll I'll be up to talk to you. Like no, Tyrone's right. Let's talk about this palette here, Dragon Fruit. Now I really haven't given this like a whole whole chance. Uh, I think just because so many people had the palette before it came out, I just was over it. And then I got it and I was just over it. However, I used a shade this month, Fruit Fizz. Yes, it might be a, a slow moving situation with this palette, but Fruit Fizz was beautiful. And I can't remember because I combined it with something. I can't remember what I combined it with, but look at that shade. It's gorgeous. Oh, don't have any room there. There it is. I, I really can't remember because um, I haven't been filming as much in the morning. So now I can't remember. But there's some great shades here. And this may be more of a companion palette. Uh, and that's how I used it. But I, I really like these toppers here. Been going for those in the inner corner for the highlight. There, there are some nice shades. So I'm not writing this palette off or anything like that. But I know I, I never reviewed it. I never did like my multiple looks video and um i mean i guess i could still do that but the quality's great you know it's just a lot of pink here but when i pull this out with something else there's there's something here for me to use every time so i was happy to pull that out and use it even though i might not be using it in the way that i thought i was going to use it i might have said two palettes it might have been three let's see we have Isamaya. I did pull this one out and play around with it again. I Okay, so here's my thing. I think this palette is a really nice color story and I think the quality is, is, is good. This shade right here, it's very subtle and I think you're only gonna see it like on the eye like if you turn a certain way because it, to me it just, I don't really care for this shade. I don't think it swatches well and I, honestly let me show you like that hard pan on there and i've had to a couple of times use tape on this and i have not been using these wet so they this palette really i think reacts to i guess your natural oils in your finger or whatever if you're going to use it but this shade i'm really not happy with the, that shade at all i just feel like I don't see anything. And the thing is, is with a palette that cost the price that it did, I want everything to show up. I really like this iridescent purple shade. Oh, this, yeah, this one looks good. But this one, I, I'm just not into that shade. Love this shade. I think this is Whip. Um, I think I said it in my video. These two are not showing up different enough on me. So, I, I, you know. As far as using these shades, to me, it makes it more complicated. Yes, it's texture. Yes, it's interesting and all that kind of stuff. But I'm kind of pressed for time in the morning, especially now. So this it just has to be a time where I really want to play. But I'm finding that. And let me know if you have this palette. But I feel like these are really prone to hard pan. And some shades in this palette more than others. It's not every shade in this palette. But like even this green to me, like... Maybe it's just designed to use with brushes and maybe not with fingers. I haven't looked into it that much, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, although I like the palette and the color story, I don't think you should pay full price for it. That's just how I feel. Is it different? Yes. Do I see a lot of inspiration with this palette? I do. 
I do wish that one of these putties was a brown, but um, yeah, that's how I feel about it. I actually wore this palette on the first day of school and I think I used the shade Sweat, which was this one. I used Flesh, like to make it like a halo. And then I put Cuprum, no, Initiator in the inner corner. So some of these, like I said, they pick up great but some of them, I don't know what's going on. So I, I'm gonna be watching for the next collection. Uh, I'm very curious about it because I feel like each collection is gonna have a bit of a different theme. But I I got this from Selfridges, so it may have been $10 cheaper, but the regular price, I'm not sure if it was really worth that price. I'm just being honest. Because lately I haven't been going for like fussy makeup. I think that palette's a bit fussy. I know I've heard some people say it's beginner friendly. I personally don't think it is, and that's just me. Speaking of not beginner friendly, we have to talk a bit about Muerte. Now y'all know Muerte was a story I've been looking to get since the beginning of time, but this is not the best melt quality. Don't get me wrong, this color story is very unique. I do not regret having this palette in my collection. I am happy to have Vita and Muerte together. I was very excited that Melt was bringing it back. And even at that time, I was like, I have not been doing these bold looks, super bold grungy looks, super bold deep looks. And I've decided like blue eyeshadow is just not my favorite. And I'm looking here at a palette that's mostly blue, gray, you know, so you have four shades that aren't. I did three looks with the palette. I was happy with, I think two out of three looks. This palette is tricky. It's not the easiest to use. I, I'm just being honest. And you know, Melt can be like that. Some of their palettes are great. They're easy to use, easy to blend. And some of them, it may be the colors that they're choosing are just not. So, you know, looking at this now with my lens now on makeup, I don't see me pulling this palette out a whole lot. For me, it's more of a collector's type item. And not that I have the money to be buying collector's items. This was just a palette that I really was looking for and wanting. And I still have to do that dupe video. These shimmers are rough. They're rough. I mean, they perform fine, but they feel rough, you know? And I'm just not sure where I'm going, where I'm gonna do this color story. So. Again, this could be a companion palette. I don't know, but I am still happy to have it. I don't think this is their best quality. Like, no, it's not like Rust. It's not like um, 27. Um, what's the other one that I really like by Melt? I can't think of it. Mary Jane, aside from those outer shimmers that I got rid of. So happy to have Muerte. Not sure the next time I'm wearing Muerte. Muerte might be Muerte for real in this collection but I'm gonna always keep this. And it's sad because y'all know I was on it. Now, the shades I have for my dupe wear tape palette, I think perform better. They, I believe are a combination of Tara Moons and Sydney Grace. So I need to put that video together. Um, Hi. Very easy Did you like it? Yeah. Okay. I made that dupe palette when I was doing virtual teaching. So that was, why is this last year about a year ago so i don't know i guess i'm gonna finish my video yeah i feel like this is a long video so let's make this short and sweet celestial odyssey i think i am becoming more attracted to this palette as time goes on just the way my eyeshadow um you know style is changing this has pretty much every transition that i'm gonna need and every color that i'm gonna need to do something that's gonna be beautiful quick and simple you have that warm brown transition you got them off these two are i don't know why she keeps putting similar mattes but you got a deep brown you have the gold the green i mean it's everything that i i really need i was excited about it when it came out but i wasn't as excited as the celestial divinity palette which might still take first place out of you know the two or take the cake out of this one and uh divinity but really like this and am growing to like it even more. So I did wear this to work one day and it was like, 
I could just throw on two shades really quickly and they looked special. You know, I remember using one of these, one of those, what does she call them? 24 karat duo chromes or something. I mean, that with the transition was perfect. Heatopian Dream was a pleasant surprise to use this month. I think the quality on this is great. As much as I didn't like Celestial uh, or Heatopian Dream, I now have decided I like it better than Mothership 10, which I was saying I was gonna like Mothership 10 better. This purple is really good. Like, it's really good. Is it something I'm gonna wear every day? Probably not, but really good. Reminds me a lot of the one, like I was saying in the Huda Beauty, uh, VR Sex Dream or Blitz Sex Dream. Really nice for someone who thinks VR Sex Terrestrial was just too much of a shift. And I, I like that the mattes in this palette are different. You know, you have this one that you can use as a blush. You have kind of a cool uh, grayish mauve. And then you have a brown. I, I like that about this palette. I don't even mind the special shades in this palette. I think when I look at this palette as a standalone palette, I like it. Did I like it after the promo and after having Divine Rose 2? I did not, but um, I'm, I'm not mad. Yeah, I didn't pay full price for this, so that was great and it was new. Let's talk about Mothership 10 quickly, and I'm not gonna harp on this because I've mentioned this one already about how I'm feeling about this. It is it's disappointing, you know? The quality is great, but it's a bit disappointing and it's a bit too cool for me, I think. I'm just not sure when I'm going to uh, wanna grab for this palette, especially when I know I have the duochrome shade in other uh, indie singles and things like that. If this was something that I felt was truly unique, I would be grabbing this because I'm like, oh my gosh, I wanna use that shade. But I just don't feel like anything in this palette was truly special. And then the two mattes were very similar. So your transition shade is gonna be in the same family. I don't think they look that different on the eye. I'm still looking forward to holiday, but this, this one, mm-mm, no. The quality is great, I will say that. And I think if you like cool tones, this would be good for you because the only other cool tone palette that she has is the first one, which is subliminal. So, you know, she doesn't have a lot of cool tone palettes and you find one that you like. I mean, and, you, and she has this one. So if you like it, I would recommend it because the quality is going to be great. So that's going to be it. I know I had a lot of stuff. I was really talking a lot. But that's going to be it for kind of this makeup roundup for the month of August. Let me know some of the standouts that you tried this month. And just let me know how you're feeling about makeup in general. I am really going through like this big evolution, a lot of change, um, you know, due to my schedule and things like that and what I feel like doing. And I don't want to get to the point or be at the point where you know, like, some brands do send me things. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Like when I feel like that, I never want to film. I never want to do it. I'd be like, oh, I got to use a palette I don't really want to use. You know what I mean? I'm happy to try out makeup and stuff like that. But lately, I just been having a certain vibe and I love it. You know, and like part of me wants to be like, oh girl, if you're doing your makeup, do a palette that you need to review or that you didn't get a chance to, to talk about. And then I'm like, eh, but I don't want to. I don't want to use that. I want to use this, you know. I think I need to, at the end of the year, just really look. And I know, like, your style and taste changes, but um, I, I do feel the need to let some things go. And so that's what I need to start thinking about as we near the end of the year, because I'm just trying to get this room together and things like that and make sure that I'm using what I have, even if there is a rotation and I only use it one time in the year you know I just don't want things sitting and sitting because these are things that I've spent money on or someone thought enough about me to gift it so I do want to use it but I also want to just use stuff when I want to use it and lately the things that have been calling me are the things that are in this um this pile here so let me know what you think about all of this and um just want to say thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me today I, I think it's very helpful. I'm, I'm hoping it's helpful for you to hear how I'm feeling about things beyond the initial video. So you know if I really still like it or not, or did I just shove it in a drawer? So 
I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. So until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice. Stay safe and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.